Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to talk about today, so we're only going to show you two of the articles, but they will all be linked below. First one here, it looks like an asteroid probably hit the Earth 13,000 years ago and caused a pretty bad cold spell. And this is another good article about some of the economic challenges that China faces over the coming year. There's many more articles linked below about just about all the stuff we've been talking about, so check it out if you're interested. Many of you know that I put out a geomagnetic storm and a solar radiation storm watch from March 6th through the 10th, and as of this morning, we have them both. You can see here we have a G2 geomagnetic storm and a solar radiation storm. This is the KP index, and as you can see there, the red line jumped right past 5 and all the way up to 6. That is a moderate geomagnetic storm. This resulted from the coronal mass ejection impact that we had been expecting for a couple of days. You can see the sharp uprise right there. But something I don't talk about very often, you can see how it cuts off right there at the end, both the yellow and the orange. Now that type of abrupt change can be just as damaging to our magnetosphere and our uh, geophysical state as the impact itself. Now I won't click on these individually, but you can see here right at the end of the fluxgate magnetometer and the induction magnetometer, we are showing very serious disturbance. But it's not just geomagnetism, folks. We have a solar radiation storm. The particle bombardment is very high. The proton and electron flux on both the A's and the GOES is really spiking. And the red's above the dotted line there, so that's an official solar radiation storm. What you're looking at here is another coronal mass ejection that should hit Earth in a couple of days. This is from one of the M flares we had yesterday. We had three or four of them. But your eye should be drawn to this over here. This is the X-Class flare. It was an X5, one of the largest we've seen in a very long time. There was actually a double coronal mass ejection that came out of it. I don't know if you can see it right here. Uh, the first part comes out of the top right there with the X flare, and then there comes the second part, perhaps, uh, perhaps even a little bit more Earth directed than the initial blast. We're not done yet, folks. This spot is labeled Beta Gamma Delta, and it is not even in an Earth facing position yet. We can fully expect this thing to keep throwing off strong flares and coronal mass ejections. Now, look here in the middle. There might be more than one Delta spot right along this horizontal line where uh, you have all those sunspots there and the both polarities in a very small area, very complex, unusual shape. Not to mention that its little buddy up to the right is uh, pretty complex as well and actually played a little part in the magnetic instability that caused that X flare last night. So folks, we have this coronal hole stream as well to watch out for in the coming maybe day, tw uh, 48 hours at the most. You know we have more flares coming, more coronal mass ejections are likely and it doesn't really seem like the uh, particle flux is going to slow down at any time but in addition to that folks we have the moon the full moon coming here tomorrow you know that Mars is back there as well it's going to be conjoining with Mars sometime in the next 24 hours uh, in addition to that two days later the moon makes its monthly perigee which is the closest it comes to the earth and just a few days after that Jupiter and Venus are going to be meeting up there in the sky you can actually already see them coming together now so you know what I'm gonna tell you folks a lot of planetary alignments very very serious space weather we have to put ourselves on an earthquake watch for at least the next week or so, at least until this dies down. Be safe, everyone. That's the news.